Jack Dorsey's new project, BitChat, allows you to message without the internet, a SIM or an online account. It's built on a special type of Bluetooth technology and designed for blackout conditions. And whilst it looks like a strange little side project, it may spark the next wave of resilient technology. So what is BitChat? Well, it's a peer-to-peer -peer messaging tool that basically turns your phone into a node. Using Bluetooth low energy technology, it creates a mesh network. So lots of phones all become different nodes in this network and you can pass messages peer to peer. So a little bit like how AirTags work, a similar kind of technology, not exactly the same, but essentially your phone will connect to another phone via this Bluetooth low energy and pass a message on, meaning that you don't need the internet, you don't need the cloud and you don't need SIMs. And it's totally encrypted with added features like password protected chat rooms and panic wipes. The interesting thing is that Dorsey actually built it using Goose, which is Block's internal AI coding assistant. Apparently he did it over a weekend in some sort of hackathon. The UI is super simple and retro, intentionally so, it feels more IRC than messaging app. It's currently in beta via test flight. Immediately they were able to sign up 10,000 users and they're at capacity. And there are plans to extend to Android and Mac and iOS, etc. It's not the first app to kind of wade into these waters. We saw um, apps like Firechat, uh, Bridgeify and Briar lay kind of similar early groundwork for offline messaging using this Bluetooth mesh technology. Um, these have often been used during protests or you know outages and things like that but they struggled with things like security, reliability or mainstream usability. BitChat essentially builds on their ambition with stronger encryption, no internet fallback and a cleaner more minimal UX positioning it as the first credible mesh native chat app. So why does this matter now? Offline is becoming a feature. BitChat enables secure messaging even in environments with zero infrastructure. So that's in the event of a blackout or a protest or if you're in remote areas. Also, it's decentralization without the crypto. So maybe this is the next evolution of this kind of decentralized thinking. It uses no blockchain, no tokens, just pure peer-to-peer -peer logic. A clean post-Web3 implementation of decentralized values. So the next thing that's really interesting about this is that it was essentially vibe coded, built with this you know, internal AI tool in record time as well. So that's really impressive, but it has been released with warnings to say that there hasn't been, you know, proper audits or security. So it's not to be used for more sensitive private use cases. So this is something where, you know, there are certain vulnerabilities or bugs that could put your information at risk potentially. And this kind of highlights the tension between the vibe coding culture and the need for speed to kind of ship these things really quickly. And then kind of that challenge of making sure that it's actually fit for the market. So what I'm super curious to understand and dig into is the impact this is going to have on industries, tech, communication, you know, telecoms, uh, hardware, like how does this start to play out? Is this the first in this new category of mesh enabled tools and chat tools? BitChat might be the thing that opens the door to apps designed specifically for these offline temporary or high trust local environments. Also, it's a zero cloud security model. So this really introduces a new security paradigm where authentication and trust happen locally, not in the cloud. Also kind of changes the UX around chat. You know, this is what happens when tech innovation occurs and people start thinking about things differently. And this certainly makes us think about what we know chat to be and what chat actually might be in this new era. It strips out notifications, read receipts and typing indicators and it positions chat as a functional layer for coordination, not content. It really highlights AI's role in major infrastructure overhauls. 
you know, it raises new expectations for AI's ability to ship working prototypes really fast. But it also does reignite concerns about security rigor, um, automated development and what gaps may be left when humans aren't checking and vetting everything and going through all those processes. So overall, I'm thinking, you know, BitChat's probably not going to sweep in and replace WhatsApp and Slack and teams and you know all the normal iMessage and all the normal chat tools but it does raise very interesting questions about the evolution of offline and how our world our lifestyles the demands and desires and needs of customers are evolving and privacy is becoming more and more paramount it also really amplifies some of the conversations around AI and how big a role it's going to play in future innovations we are officially living in a time where ai built systems are no longer theoretical so there are so many themes that play in this one release that kind of seemed like it was just a side project but is now making major waves bit chat isn't just a random side project it is a glimpse into a future where communication doesn't depend on the cloud where privacy is local by design so this isn't about going and figuring out how to ship your own version of a bit chat which i'm sure a lot of people will it's kind of more about figuring out what this means for the broader market so looking into the future of how this is going to proliferate maybe we'll see more mesh native apps emerging as legitimate alternatives to the cloud maybe it will change our relationship with communication as well and move us away from this content social driven kind of approach to communication and make it more about meaningful connection. Maybe this will change our relationship as humans and the tech industry's relationship with this offline concept and shift that view that being offline is kind of kind of rogue, I guess. That would be a really interesting use case on how tech shapes the way we live versus kind of tech being shaped around the way we live. And maybe it's a signal that decentralization is shifting away from blockchain and broadening to now include architecture. It also highlights the fact that AI built tools and infrastructure, the vibe coding wave still requires a lot of human input. And the final thing is how zero cloud privacy is becoming a premium feature, not just kind of this niche or this sideline thing. More and more people may want to operate outside of the cloud. Let's see what happens overall. Hopefully this video was informative. If it was, please like, comment and subscribe. Until next time.